Microbiologists have discovered that only 10% of the cells in the human body are human. The other 90% are made up of microorganisms. In fact, if all we had was our human cells, we could not live. In 2007, the National Institute of Health funded a very large study that involved over 200 of the top experts all over the world across 80 disciplines to understand what they call the human microbiome. We're a superorganism. We're basically the, this dance between uh, the human cells, it's only this little tiny portion, and all these other living things that are not human that make us up. You know, I mean, it's just a mind blower to me. While I was doing my research, I did find you know, a documentary or two that uh, was talking about it, but I found that they were very clinical. It just really didn't tell the human story for me. It didn't tie it together in a good way, in a big way. So all this made me realize that a coherent documentary really needs to be made. As a serial entrepreneur, I meet a lot of people all the time. About 30 years ago, I met a guy that really changed my life. This guy's company grows microorganisms for use in cleaning. It really shook me up a bit because I grew up, uh, as most of us have, that germs are bad. That, I mean, we have to get rid of them. One of these stories uh, that really touched me uh, came out of Japan on the shores of an inland sea that industry had for years been dumping all of their waste into it. And it was around the same time that there was a discovery that had been made about how to brew or ferment these beneficial microbes. So then the town was educated on how to brew or ferment these microorganisms at home and basically taught to do that, take it down and dump them into the sea. And sure enough, enough people did it over a period of time that within a year, it had totally cleaned up all the toxins out of the sea. Another one was there's this poultry farm down in Central California who basically wanted to get rid of ammonia odors. They found that by using these beneficial microbes, not only did it get rid of all the odor uh, problem that was happening, but it also caused that uh, the die-off of the new chicks that would come in, which is generally like 10% or so, was reduced to almost nothing. It reduced it like 80 to 90%. Additionally, all the chickens were running around and uh, a lot more active and a lot more uniform in size, and just lots of indications about their improved health. Another series of stories actually uh, having to do with agriculture and really how important that the life in the soil is. Why you have to pay attention to the microorganisms, the bacteria, the fungi that are going on in the soil. And if you do nurture them and develop them, then the soil is healthier, the plants are healthier, the food is actually healthier for you to eat. And so there was a great story about this municipality uh, rose garden that they, like most of them, have been using chemicals and one of their local consultants got them to go cold turkey and just use microbials in their soil. And much to the delight of all the people that would come and visit the rose garden, is it smelled so wonderful. And previously, there was very little odor that was coming out of the roses, but now it just became extraordinarily fragrant. Another story is the obesity epidemic. They've actually found a link between the microorganisms that are involved in the gut and our cravings for the type of food that we want to eat. Processed food ends up being one of the real challenges that we have going on because a processed food is totally sterile. And as being sterile, we're not getting the uh, indigenous, if you will, microorganisms that we would get if we were just eating it right out of the garden or we we're eating fresh food. Those microorganisms, as they proliferate in our gut from repeated eating, they actually stimulate chemicals for us to crave those particular foods that they desire. So over time, you actually end up with microorganisms that are going to say, go have a Big Mac or go have, you know, the, these, uh, I mean, it's crazy sounding, but <laughs> it's in fact how it works.
Well, and there's a lot of evidence that people that do eat fermented foods on a regular basis, that that's just part of their diet. They tend to live longer, they have less disease, they particularly have less chronic disease, which is really a problem for us here in the United States. Our obsession with getting rid of germs and trying to have everything totally sterile actually works against us because it's doing two things. It is reducing the diversity that we have within us. And the reality is you can't keep anything sterile very long. And in fact, that brings in another story that had to do with a major children's hospital that did a clinical trial and compared, okay, if they change simply from a disinfectant infectant to a probiotic cleaner, what was the effect? They discovered that it reduced the hospital acquired infections 75 to 80 percent by doing that. And it comes right back to that. If you create it to be totally sterile, the pathogens come back faster. If you do it with a probiotic, it's designed to actually leave beneficial microbes behind, which then take up all the spaces that microbes like to live in and the bad guys kind of come in and they're defeated because the other good guys are already there. Truly a structural change is taking place. The whole understanding of what we mean to be human, in fact how the world is organized, is dramatically changing.